Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. I'm so excited as we continue this series on themes in the Gospel of John. Such a blessing today, fulfilling Old Testament prophecies. Welcome to Hope Sabbath School. And again, I'm excited because one of our team is going to be teaching, Stephanie Great to have you with us today, and great to have our team here. Give everybody a wave. We're glad you're here. We've got some remote team members with us we want to welcome today. Faith, great to have you with us today. Glad you're here. Mighty, good to have you with us today. And I think Rodney's with us. Good to see you, Rodney. And we're also happy that you're here because you're part of our global family. Just received an email from someone who said, I raise my hand when you ask a question whenever someone's teaching, because that's what we call interactive, right? And we're also happy when you write to us from wherever you are in the world as part of our Hope Sabbath School family. So, Muyonzo, thank you for writing to us from the country of Uganda. Muyonzo writes and says, I appreciate your in-depth understanding of the Word of God. I am blessed. I think we'd say we learn too, don't we, Puya, as we study the Word together. May the good Lord and Father of us all fill you with plenty of His blessings. Amen. 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 We say amen too. Thank you, Muyonzo, for writing to us from the country of Uganda. Here's a note from Linda on our Facebook page. I think we have about 180,000 uh, subscribers on our Facebook, you say, Derek, I'm one of them. Well, Linda writes and says, I am so very happy to see Hope Sabbath School on Facebook. As an avid listener to Hope Sabbath School, I encourage everyone who really loves the Lord and wants to know more about Him and His everlasting love to watch Hope Sabbath School. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Excellent. Learning about more about Jesus through His Word, the Bible, I guarantee you will be inspired and blessed. If there's a desire to love the Lord, to walk in His footsteps, and to one day be with Him in that beautiful home He's gone to prepare for us, accepting Jesus as our Savior and Lord, He promises He will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Wow, that was a sermon. <laughs> that was a sermon. Thank you, uh, Linda. I encourage everyone who wants to have a closer walk with Jesus to watch Hope Sabbath School. Amen. Amen. Be inspired and be blessed. Well, thank you, Linda, for writing. And you are an evangelist sharing the good news. And we're so happy you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Here is a little handwritten note from the state of Alabama here in the United States of America. And the donor writes... Hello, Hope Sabbath School. Hello. Hello. Got the wave. You have really been a blessing to me and my family. I can't see that well, but I can really hear the Word of God. Amen. Isn't that a, a, a reason why we want to speak clearly mm. so that people get the message? Mm. May God continue to bless you all in Jesus' name and a donation of $100. Amen. The Blessed Hope Sabbath School. Thank you, Donna. You know who you are. Thank you for sharing with us in the mission. And thanks to each one of you. You know, we're at a time of the year when some are saying, what could I do? Where can I lay up some treasure in heaven? I want to encourage you to partner with us. Just go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess, click on the donate button, or get an address there at our website and send us a note. Let us know how you're blessed and how you want to extend that blessing to others. One last note from Ernest, a Liberian in Norway. <laughs> That's a long way from home, Joshua, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm Ernest, originally from Liberia in West Africa, living in Norway. Mm -hmm. I've been watching Hope Sabbath School for over a decade now. Oh, wow. <laughs> when I moved to Norway, there was no church in my area, so I decided to do my Bible study online. <clears throat> I did that for some time, but I wanted an interactive class. Mm -hmm. You know what's happening, don't you? Yeah. All right. I wanted an interactive class where we could see and hear different perspectives. In my search to get such a study, 
I came across Hope Sabbath School, Hope Sabbath School. <laughs> and I've been glued to it since then. I love the testimonies, the scripture songs, and the, what do you think? Diversity. <laughs> Take a look at each other. We don't all look the same. People say, Hope Sabbath School, I like it. We look like the world, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like the testimonies, scripture songs, and diversity. I want to thank Bodil Morris for composing the scripture songs and making the Bible easier to memorize. I also enjoyed the inspiration when you give class members the opportunity to teach. Well, today, Ernest, is the day. Here's Stephanie. She's one of our team teachers. Great idea. Thank you for everything you do. And this person is a monthly donor. Oh, wow. Praise the Lord. Praise yeah. The Lord. So you never know where you are, if you're in Nor Norway or Liberia or Botswana or South Africa. You can be part of the mission. Amen. Amen. Mm. Well, I just want to remind you before we sing our song that we have a special gift for you during this series. And it's a collection of scripture songs from the words of Jesus. My wife has put some of the words of Jesus to music. And I just want to encourage you. One of my favorites is in this collection of six scripture songs from the words of Jesus. It's in Revelation. Four of them from John, two are in Revelation. It says, do not be afraid. I'm the first and the last. You know the text? Yeah. I'm he who lives, was dead. <laughs> Behold, Amen. I am alive forevermore. If you downloaded the six songs just to get that one, you'd be incredibly blessed. So go to our website, hopetv.org slash hope SS. Click on the free gift tab and you'll get directions to download that collection of six trilogy scripture songs from the words of Jesus. We're going to sing our theme song now. It's about Jesus, but not the words of Jesus. It's the words of the great prophet John the Baptist when he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Let's sing it together. Behold the Lamb of God Who takes away the sin Who takes away the sin Of the world I have seen and testified That this is the Son of God Who takes away the sin all the world. I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove. I saw That this is the Son of God Who takes away the sin of the world Behold the Lamb The Lamb of God Behold the Lamb The Lamb of God Behold the Lamb, the Lamb of God. And that's what we want to do in our study today, fulfilling Old Testament prophecies, is behold the Lamb of God, predicted hundreds of years before He came. Yes. Thanks for leading our study, Stephanie. 
All right, let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that we can trust it. We ask for your Holy Spirit to guide us into your word and your truth today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 I have a question for us as we begin our study today. And that question is, who is Jesus? Hmm. Who is Jesus? Rodney? Can we read a text just to answer your question? It is taken from Matthew 1 and verse 16. Matthew, Matthew 1, 1 and verse 16. Would you like us to go there? Yes, please. All right. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 16. And, and I'm reading from New King James Version. It says, And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So Jesus is the Christ. He's the Son of God, and he was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Puya. For me, I would say Jesus Christ is the Creator and the Savior. Creator and Savior, Tendi. He is the Lamb of God, the light of the world, the way, the truth, and the life. Jonathan. He's the image of God, the revelation, the perfect revelation of his character. The perfect mm. revelation of his character. Jeffrey. Physician, <laughs> healer. Mm. Mm. Very good. Well, I put it out on social media. I asked the question on social media, and here are some of the responses I received. Mm. The Word made flesh. Mm. Mm. A preacher and religious leader. Messiah, mm. divine, mm. son of God. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the Bible says. We'll start our study in the book of John, John chapter 5, verses 17, 20, and 36. And Zendili, do you have that? Would you start our study today? So, John chapter 5, verses 17, 20, and 36. Okay, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version, uh, John chapter 5, verse 17. But Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Verse 20. For the father loves the son and shows him all the things that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. Uh, verse 36. But I have greater witness than John's. For the works which the Father has given me to finish the very works that I do bear witness of me, and the Father has sent me. All right. Mm. And let's also read John chapter 10, verse 25. And Jeffrey, if you would read that for us, John chapter 10 and verse 25. And I want to ask a question as we're reading this text. Mm -hmm. What do these words of Jesus reveal about his close collaboration with the Father in heaven? Yeah. Go ahead, Jeffrey. All right, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. All right, what do these words of Jesus how did they show his close collaboration mm. with God the Father? Jonathan. Yeah, I mean, people kept asking Jesus, like, who are you? Or like, what, what, and how do you do such things? Or how do you claim such things? And he repeatedly points back to these works that he was doing that obviously no one else can do. And so he's, he's saying, my, the works that I'm doing show my relationship to the Father. Mm. So pay attention to them. Gladys. Yeah, Jesus said many times, you know, I don't do anything of my own. Mm -hmm. Everything I do is what the Father tells me to do. So these verses just reveal that they, they were working in close connection. He was only doing what the Father revealed for him to do. Mm -hmm. You know, Derek. it just hit me from your post, uh, Who is Jesus? That if we didn't have the Bible, mm -hmm. we just have to say, well, he's someone that a lot of people talk about, I guess a mm -hmm. famous teacher mm -hmm. of some kind. But we wouldn't have any of the testimonies that we're hearing today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The That's Bible right. is so important. And I know you're going to take us actually to the Bible before even the incarnation, right? Mm -hmm. Because, but even there, Jesus said, these are all about me. So I guess what I'm sensing in the answer to who was Jesus mm -hmm. is I really need the inspired word of God to answer that question. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. 
Sandili. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, they show us that uh, Jesus and the Father, they had a shared mission and they had a uh, intimate relationship together which was divine so whenever mm -hmm. when he's saying the father he shows the divinity of him and jesus yeah. boldly claimed mm -hmm. his relationship with mm -hmm. god the father let's look at john chapter 10 looking at verses 37 and 38 and mighty if you would be willing to read that for us john chapter 10 verses 37 and 38 we're looking at what that bold claim was of jesus about his close relationship with God the Father. Sure, so John chapter 10, verse 37 and 38, I'm reading the King James Version. It says, If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. What are you hearing there? Thank you, Mighty. What are you hearing? Go ahead, Scott. One of the things that we've seen already in the Gospel of John is that Jesus works our signs. And that's what he's, he's saying here, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Even if you have some questions, look at the works mm -hmm. and see that God the Father mm -hmm. is in it. And if, if God the Father, if you see the evidence that he's in these works, then you should believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And his mm -hmm. bold claim is what? What is his bold claim? Well, we can go to John chapter 14. Shall we go to John chapter 14? And let's look at verse 7 through 13. And then also verse 23. Mm -hmm. And faith, if you would be willing to read that for us, John chapter 14. And that's verse 7 through 13 and verse 23. Yes, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Verse 7, if you had known me, you would have known my father also, and from now on you know him, and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father, and it is sufficient for us. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the father, mm -hmm. so how can you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also in greater works then these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen. Amen. And you said verse 20? Yeah, 23. 23. Oh, 23. Okay. Verse 23. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, mm -hmm. and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Hmm. What is the bold claim? <laughs> Thank you, Faith. Mm -hmm. What is the bold claim? <laughs> Jonathan. Yeah, I mean, here he, you have this man that is walking around and the disciples are watching, other people are watching them and slowly realizing that this, this, this living person they can reach and touch is God himself, mm -hmm. is the divine living. And so that the, mm. he, he, and when he claims here, he is in the Father, the Father is in him that, yeah, the Almighty has come to earth. Emmanuel. 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 Right. God with yeah. us. They are one. They are one. And John chapter 10, verse 30, mm -hmm. Jesus is very clear. Mm -hmm. He says, my Father and I are one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very clear. Scott, and then we'll go to Jeffrey. Yeah, and, and just to make this explicit, Jesus is saying that he is God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey. Yes, but not, I when we're reading this and we're reading it, and we're witnessing, well, the disciples were witnessing Jesus's, you know, deeds and things. It's not just majesty and power, but character. Mm. It's like, mm. well, you know, let the children come on to me. Mm. You know, it, mm. that's the thing. Back then, God was some dictator, authoritarian, like, if you don't do what I say, you're going to be punished. Mm. And Jesus is like, no, I'm trying to 
heal you. I'm trying to save you. And that's really what it is. God is on your side. I'm on your side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They both have the same mission, yes. God mm -hmm. and the Father. And I think it's important, Stephanie, to re reiterate mm -hmm. that Jesus never says, I am the Father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. He says, the Father and I are one. Mm -hmm. He says, if you've seen me, He's to use the language the Jeffrey was using, you've seen a full revelation mm -hmm. of the character of my Father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't say, I am the Father. That's right. That's right. Right, And he'll later say, I'll send you another comfort of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He doesn't mm -hmm. ever say, I am the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So there is this mystery of the Godhead, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and yet they are so close that they are one. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right. Divine. Jesus is we'll divine. We'll study that for eternity, I think. We will. <laughs> How do these words that we've just read in John reveal to us that the beginning of John, his inspired declaration mm. about who Jesus was? Mm. Mm. Let's look at John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And Rodney, if you would be prepared to read that for us. And we're looking to see how the verses we just read confirm the um, declaration that was at the beginning of John. So I'm reading John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, and reading from the New King James Version. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Did you want to comment on that, Rodney? <laughs> It comes back to the question that you were asking earlier, Stephanie, about who is Jesus. And here it is clearly making the connection between the Word, who is representing Jesus in this context, to mm -hmm. God Himself, God the Father. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, as back to the point that Derek just mentioned, if you notice, you have the Father and you have Jesus, and they are interconnected. There is a popular belief out there that there is just one entity, but what we're seeing here is that there is a clear depiction between God mm -hmm. and the Father. And you also see in different aspects in John where, where Jesus would actually go and get instructions from his Father. Essentially, early in the morning, he would commune with his Father Amen. for mm -hmm. direction for him that particular day. Yes. Thank wow. you very much. Mm -hmm. Did we have another comment? All right. We're moving on now to Scott. Did I see your hand? <laughs> yeah, I was just noticing when it says the Word was with God and the Word was God. If you read that um, in the original language, there's a little bit of emphasis on the word God. Like the Word was God. Like this is, uh -huh. this is the point that one of the major points that John wants us to get. And, and mm -hmm. it's, it's just right there in that first verse of John. Mm -hmm. Right, and the Word, we know, became flesh and dwelt yes. among us, right? Mm -hmm. So we understand yeah. that to be yeah. Jesus, Jesus, just to yeah. clarify that. Mm -hmm. And you know, Stephanie, anybody could make that claim, well, I'm the Word, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, but as we've heard earlier, it's, it's the life mm -hmm. and the works, the mm -hmm. ministry, it's what, again, we need the Bible. That's and right. as we see that, we see it's not just the rash claim of a madman mm -hmm. mm -hmm. claiming to be the Son of God, Mm. Right. But it is speaking truth and is evidenced by how he lived and, mm. and what he did. That's right. In fact, Jesus, and we're going to move on. Now we've established he is divine. Yes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to move on and look at how Jesus claimed that the Hebrew scriptures <laughs> pointed to him as mm -hmm. the Messiah. All right. Powerful. So we're going back to John, yeah. John chapter 5, and looking at verses 39 and 40 and then 46. And Joshua, would you read that for us? Sure. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And the Bible says, You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. Mm -hmm. And these are they which testify of me. Amen. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And verse 46. That's right. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. <laughs> what was Jesus' claim? <laughs> <laughs> that the one that you have learned about, the one that you have studied and understood from your ancestors and teachers, all of them were prophesying of you, of me, which you now see today. Mm. So he was referring back mm -hmm. 
to Moses and the prophets yes. 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 Right. and saying that they testified of him. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Gladys. Yeah, it, you know, the, the Hebrew children, they will learn the first five books of the Torah and Moses was their biggest prophet. So mm -hmm. for, for him to claim right there, you know, what, you believe in Moses, but he was talking about me. Mm -hmm. He was kind of referring to them, just like Joshua was saying, kind of saying all the things that you have been studying, you should have been able to recognize me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Rodney. Stephanie, um, everyone knew back then, well, the Jews knew back then Moses as the deliverer of the Jews again back then. And they also associate the, the changing of the water to blood mm -hmm. by Moses, who was, you know, the deliverer. Clearly, Moses, you know, asked God for, for, for that um, part to be able to do so. And I believe that is why when you run over now to, to John, and John talks about the first miracle of Jesus, it was all about water, turning water into something else, water into wine in that particular case, not blood, but wine. So it should have triggered something in the minds of the Jews to say, I've heard that story some time ago, which was water turning to something, which is blood. Here it is, water turning into wine. This must have been... The, 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 the Messiah that Moses was pointing to, the greater prophet that Moses was pointing to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What does that tell us about Jesus' conviction about the scriptures, the validity of the scriptures? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I try to imagine what if there were no scripture, Jesus would show up on the scene and say, surprise, I'm here. <laughs> but, <laughs> but instead, Jesus said, well, Moses wrote about me mm -hmm. and all the prophets wrote about me. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was using the scripture as a way to uh, confirm, in a way, solidify their faith that He is truly the Messiah. And Puya, maybe you can take us there. Jesus also confirmed who He was when mm -hmm. He referred back to the Old Testament, mm -hmm. the Hebrew scriptures. Mm -hmm. right. In Luke, Luke chapter 24, verse 36, when He spoke to those two disciples after His resurrection, on the road to Emmaus, mm. right? Luke chapter 24, verse 27. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Luke 24, verse 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just wish I was walking with <laughs> Jesus that day. Don't you? Right. Yes. Um, where did he start? Maybe Genesis 3.15, I'm mm -hmm. going to put uh -huh. enmity, I don't know. <laughs> but he walked them through the scriptures mm -hmm. and made it clear right. who mm -hmm. the Hebrew scriptures were mm -hmm. pointing to mm -hmm. was him. Mm -hmm. He uh -huh. was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. right. All right, Derek. I love the testimony of those two disciples. Hmm. Later they said, didn't our hearts burn within us? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you know, Gladys talked about the scriptures, but but they saw like this mm -hmm. amazing revelation. Mm -hmm. Again, not a random claim, mm -hmm. but they saw all of these fulfilled in the Jesus they knew and followed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. It right. must have been amazing. Mm -hmm. It must yeah. have. Right. All right, Tendi? Um, I just wanted to add that every time Jesus ta talks about the scriptures um, validating who he is or testifying about him, hmm. if you read the text, scriptures, and me, scriptures, and him is always in capitals, which is emphasis. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Jonathan. Yeah, I just think it's interesting how God didn't reveal everything all at once. He, you know, left little pictures throughout scriptures. And so you, as you go through the scriptures, as you walk through them, and, and as, as they're, the disciples, you know, look afterwards and say, oh, wow, that reveals to him. Oh, that reveals to him. Mm -hmm. And so I think maybe that's what, how God, you know, works in our life as well, as, you know, bit by bit by bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeffrey. Yes. You know, the God that we serve does not just make claims. He reveals evidence. And that's mm -hmm. really what this whole great controversy is all about. And when Jesus mm -hmm. on earth, revealing the evidence bit by bit and making us fully convinced in our own minds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Zandili. 
So I went back to the five books that Moses wrote to try to find out like what, what really prefigured Jesus that he was referring to when he was saying, starting from Moses. And I found that in Genesis, Moses says he is the seed in Genesis 3.15. And in Leviticus, he is the Passover lamb. Mm -hmm. And uh, in um, Ex no, in Exodus, he is the Passover lamb. And in Leviticus, he is the sacrificial system. You all sacrifice, you, you're familiar with this one. And this pointed to me dying on the cross for you. Mm -hmm. And in Numbers, he is the bronze serpent. He says to Judah, to uh, Nicodemus, mm -hmm. if the son of man should be lifted up, just like Moses, when he lifted up the serpent in the desert, that was me. And in Deuteronomy, he says, <laughs> I, Moses says, God will raise up a prophet who mm -hmm. is like unto me, mm -hmm. but who will be greater than me. So when when he's saying Moses, I was like, okay, I really need to see what Moses was saying about the manna, which is mm. Jesus, the bread mm. of life. Mm. Amen. Amen. And Amen. as you pointed out, thank you so much, Zendili, mm. as you pointed out each uh, verse, mm. each Bible book mm -hmm. that was uh, you found, it's prolific. It's yes. throughout yes. the whole Hebrew scriptures. Mm. Yes, right. Puya. Mm. And, and to, to add to that, it's not just the books of Moses. If we mm. go through every single books of the Old mm -hmm. Testament, the Hebrew Scripture, throughout all the Old Testament time, they were all pointing forward to the coming Messiah. So this is all about Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And it wasn't, w w of course, later He revealed Himself to the 11 disciples, right? Mm -hmm. And He repeated something very similar. Mm -hmm. And maybe we should just go there. Uh, Luke chapter 24, looking at verses 36 and then 44 and 45. And who would, Gladys, would you read that for us? Sure. I'm reading from the New International Version, Luke chapter 27, verse 36, and then 44 and 45. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Verse 44, he said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that it is written about me in the law of Moses, mm -hmm. the prophets, and the Psalms. Mm -hmm. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. Wow. Amen. Mm. Amen. Mm. Jesus recognized that the Hebrew scriptures pointed to him yeah. mm -hmm. as the Messiah. Amen. But he's not the only one. His disciples did too. Mm -hmm. Let's look at John chapter 1, verse 45. Jonathan, would you read that for us? Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did Na Philip say? He found who? The one. The one mm -hmm. who was prophesied, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to John chapter 2 and look at verse 17 and 22. And Mighty, would you be able to read that for us? John chapter 2, verses 17 and 22. I'll be reading from the King James Version. And it says, And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house has eaten me up. 22. When therefore he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. What can we learn from the fact that both the disciples and Jesus had confidence mm. in the scriptures? Mm. Mm. What do you learn for t yourselves today? What can we learn? Mm. Huya. As we just looked at that verse 22 from chapter 2, they, they, the disciples believe because they witnessed the fulfillment mm -hmm. of what Jesus prophesied. Mm -hmm. And so, for me, uh, when I read the scripture and study these prophecies and seeing it in fulfillment mm -hmm. in the history of this world, it, yes. it brings a great deal of uh, evidence, mm -hmm. as Jeff pointed out, evidence to believe that this is trustworthy mm -hmm. because the predictions and the prophecies are fulfilled. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. I think you're, you're making a really important point because modern liberal mm -hmm. scholars mm -hmm. will say, 
this just related to people back then. It, mm. There's no one who can tell what's going to happen in the future, not even God. Mm. Well, God does claim, I know the end from the beginning, <laughs> right? right? Mm -hmm. Things that have not yet come to pass. But Jesus had confidence in mm. the reliability mm. of those prophecies, mm. testifying mm. about Him. Mm. And I think uh, today, our Hope Sabbath School members around the world, they need to realize that, that we don't listen to the scoffers and the skeptics mm -hmm. who say, none of that has any significance. It's just something back then. Right. But holy men of God were moved by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So it's actually very exciting, as Zandili was sharing, I found this in Genesis, found this in Exodus. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an exciting discovery. I know you're going to lead us on yes. some of it. But it's important to know it's not just opinion, mm. that this is the reliable, inspired Word of God. Mm. Indeed. Mm. Indeed. And Derek was bringing out a verse, Second <laughs> Peter chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. Let's read that. And before we read that, Rodney, I see you have a comment. And maybe you can read uh, second, Timoth or second Peter chapter 1, verses 19 through 21 after your comment. What I wanted to comment before I read this text is, it is also interesting to note that it is possible for you to know the scriptures, mm -hmm. but still don't believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So those leaders back then, they knew the scriptures. That's why Jesus made the point, you, you, know, you know the scriptures and in them you think you have eternal life and essentially he's saying, here I am, mm -hmm. the fulfillment of what you have been reading and you still don't believe. So. There is the aspect of us mm. when we read the scriptures to open our hearts mm. to the bidding of the Holy Spirit so that he can lead us to understand Amen. who Jesus truly Amen. is. Amen. Mm. So mm. as we look at 2 Peter 1 verses uh, 19 and 21, is that what you said, Stephanie? 19. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, 19 and 21. And it says in the New King James Version, and so we have the prophetic word confirmed. Mm -hmm which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Verse 21. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the scripture was inspired. Mm. Mm -hmm. I saw a few comments here, Scott. <laughs> you know, um, we skipped over verse 20 where it says that, that no script, prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is the other side of what we talked about, how Jesus had confidence in the Scripture. And we talked about how some people say, well, the Scripture doesn't matter. But there are other times when people get very much into their own kind of esoteric understanding of the Scripture. It has mm -hmm. a spiritual mm -hmm. meaning. And this is also what we're saying is that, no, the, the scripture has a plain meaning. Mm -hmm. We read it, and, and when the plain meaning is apparent, that's what we should hold to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can trust the Word of God. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at, I'm sorry, we need our time it limits us, so we have to move on to the next section. Okay. But let's take a look at some Old Testament prophecies and how we see those fulfilled in the life of Jesus. We'll start in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, and then I'll let you be thinking as we're reading this, some of the other times where we see in the Old Testament mm -hmm. that it was fulfilled, those prophecies were fulfilled in the life of Jesus. Isaiah 40, verse three. Mm -hmm. And Jeffrey, if you would read that for us. Yes, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where do we see that fulfilled? In John. John. In John. Who, yeah. who fulfilled that? John, John the Baptist. Baptist. John the Baptist. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a look at that. John chapter 1, verse 23. And Scott, would you read that for us? John chapter 1, verse 23. Okay, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. He, that's John the Baptist, he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So referring back to what? Hebrew <laughs> scriptures. Yeah. Yes. All right, what are some other examples? Mm -hmm. Psalms. Psalms. Psalms, go ahead. Yeah, Psalms 1, 
118, verse 26. Psalm 118, verse 26. Blessed is the name he that comes in the name of the Lord. <laughs> yeah, yes. please, please read that for us. Psalm chapter 118, 118 verse 26. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. And it says, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where do we see that fulfilled? The John triumphant entry. entry. And the triumphal mm -hmm. entry, yeah. John chapter 12, right? Mm -hmm. John chapter 12, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And Rodney, would you be willing to read that for us? John chapter 12, verse 13. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. And we need to follow that one up with Zechariah, okay? Zechariah nine, chapter nine. 9, verse 9, because they're closely connected. Tendi, would you read that for us? Thank you, Stephanie. And I'll be reading Zechariah 9, 9 from the New King James Version. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the fall of a donkey. We'll see the fulfillment of this. John chapter 2, verse 14. 12. 2 or 12. 12. 12. 12. I'm sorry, John chapter 12. Thank okay. you. <laughs> and we'll be looking at 14, verse 14. Jonathan, would you read that for us? Sure. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it just as it was written. Do you want to read uh, verse 15 I as do. well? <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Okay, so we're looking at John chapter 12 and now looking at verse 15. All right. And it says, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. What was the importance of him coming in that manner? Jesus had not wanted anyone to, you know, bring mm. any light to himself. Mm -hmm. But now he was riding, triumphal entry, riding into mm. Jerusalem mm. on a donkey. Mm. What is mm. significant about him doing that? Mm. Hoya? He was fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah, and it, he, there was no excuse for anyone in Jerusalem who witnessed that scene to deny that, you know, Jesus wasn't the Messiah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was being welcomed in as the prophecy predicted. It was important for Jesus to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and this was the first day of the week, right? Mm -hmm. Leading up, he knew, Jesus knew it would take him to the cross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He knew that. Well, also, Gladys. you know, whenever the, the kings and, and the army went out to war, mm -hmm. whenever they were triumphant, they would come in, mm -hmm. riding yes. into the city. Mm -hmm. So, and the people would come out and celebrate. So, Jesus was fulfilling. He got to the end of his mission and he yes. was coming. Mm -hmm. The kings were coming horses, but he chose a humble way to come mm -hmm. in. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not to, like you said before, to bring glory to himself, but mm -hmm. to point to the scriptures humbly Amen. on Amen. a Cult. Mm -hmm. Yes. Derek, did you have a no, comment? She's right. No triumphal entry on a stallion. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. But, but yeah. exactly the way the prophet had foretold hundreds yes. of years before. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Jonathan. Just that, that um, I think goes with this picture. I mean, we have kings coming in and here he's he's fulfilling that, but it's different. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not yes. the, you know, come in triumphantly like, like they wanted him to, honestly. It was this picture like there's something different about this Messiah that's coming. Mm -hmm. He's humble. He's lowly. Mm -hmm. He's riding on a donkey. Riding on a donkey. donkey. <laughs> Where are some other places in the Old Testament scripture that speak that point to Jesus as the Messiah and that were fulfilled in the New Testament, mm -hmm. in the life of Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, there, there are a few, um, uh, I could just summarize, try to summarize and say that the Bible predicted where he would be born, mm -hmm. where he would be raised up, mm -hmm. how, he would be, how he would be rejected and how he would die. Right? Mm -hmm. All those prophecies were written hundreds and hundreds of years right. before Jesus ever showed up on the scene. 
Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. ah. Nice summary. Thank you. Anyone else? Also, he talks yeah. about exactly like about his crucifixion. You know, he will be peers, he will be rejected, he will be mocked. So every, every single detail of his life was predicted. Mm. Faith, I see your hand. Yes, it also talks about how he would be born, how he'd be born from a virgin. Mm. And that's exactly how he was born. Mm -hmm. See, through the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin Mary. Amen. Mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's important. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jesus' timing, I, as, as we have read through John, we recognize that there were times before mm -hmm. that they would have taken him and killed him. Mm -hmm. Right. But the Bible records it was not his time. It was not his time. Mm. Mm. And I know this is not in our outline, but I'm just thinking of Galatians. Galatians chapter 4, and I believe it's verse 3 and 4. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 3 and 4. Go ahead, Zanjali. Okay, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. It says, But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. All right. Mm -hmm. Do you mind reading verse 5 as well? Mm -hmm. Verse 5. To redeem those who were under the law, mm -hmm. that we might receive the adoption as sons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus was born on time. Mm -hmm. He was, went into ministry on time. Mm -hmm. He was crucified on time. He raised on time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was all according to prophecy. If we look at Daniel chapter 9, which mm -hmm. we cannot surround in this, in this <laughs> uh, study today, mm -hmm. but Daniel chapter 9 reveals that mm -hmm. Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament prophetic prophecies, mm -hmm. the prophecies of the Old Testament mm -hmm. to the T. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Right. Now, we could just go home and say, hey, we proved that that's Jesus, right? That Jesus is the Messiah. Mm -hmm. But my question is, does it make a difference mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who we believe Jesus is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it make a difference? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gladys. Well, John 17, 3 says that this is eternal life, mm -hmm. that they may know you, that only through God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Mm -hmm. So knowing God in Him, we find salvation. Mm -hmm. So without knowing that He came, He saved, He died for us, mm -hmm. there is no point to this life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey. It is very important because without such evidence, how can we truly trust Him? And if we can't trust Him, how can He save us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He reaches out, but if we cannot grab His hand in full trust, mm -hmm. what's the point? Mm -hmm. So if Jonathan. Yeah, I mean, we, many religions believe in God, and there was a, a common belief of a God that was similar to the Old Testament. But if that didn't actually come to the revelation of God's character in Christ and, and the actual fulfillment of the, the, sol the solving of the sin problem in Christ's sacrifice for sin, I mean, where would we be? We would just we would be lost without the true hope. Amen. Mm. Scott. You know, um, if we had just one Old Testament script that spoke of Jesus, hmm. we might be able to look at it and say, you know, you could see it that way, or you could see it this way, or you maybe, maybe there's some coincidence or there, and you start, you start adding more and more and more, and it becomes abundantly clear that there's only one possible interpretation. If you, if you say, well, despite all of that, I don't believe that Jesus is, is, a, is a, a, the God, basically. If we reject that, we're rejecting all of Scripture. We're mm -hmm. rejecting the whole foundation. We have nothing left over mm -hmm. but essentially secularism. Like it's all, it all depends on this. Like you, you can't, you can't pick and choose and say, I want this part, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be skeptical about this, and I'm gonna be skeptical, mm -hmm. skeptical about this. Scott, what I'm hearing you say and what I'm hearing all of us say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that this is vitally important. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. This has eternal stakes. Mm -hmm. yes. right. mm -hmm. Whether or not we believe that Jesus is the Messiah, mm -hmm. it has eternal results. Derek, did you want to add to that? You know, some have said, I'm not a statistician, mm -hmm. but some have said, 
the chances of someone else fulfilling one of those prophecies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's possible. Many other people were born in Bethlehem, right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. But again, the statistical likelihood of fulfilling two or three or four, and then you get up to scores of prophecies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is absolutely impossible mm -hmm. for that to happen by chance. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's you right. either have to, like Scott said, discard the whole Bible mm -hmm. or say, well, it must have been written after it happened mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. But if you read the Bible with the confidence that Jesus had in the scriptures, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have to come to the conclusion Mm. that He is who He claimed to be. Amen. And more Amen. than that, as you pointed out, to realize that He wants us to have life mm. through His name. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. So, so here's my next question. Thank you, Derek. My next question is this. There's someone who may be watching us today mm -hmm. who's saying, you're just applying Scripture to Jesus. Mm. <laughs> Trying to make it fit. That's right. Mm -hmm. It really wasn't, Jesus really wasn't the Messiah. How would you respond to that person? Remember, eternal destiny at stake. Mm -hmm. How would you respond to that person? Mm -hmm. I'm going to respond since I raised the question <laughs> and say, slow down and realize our first responsibility is to love that person. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And our second responsibility which I think Jonathan's been emphasizing, is to ourselves be a revelation mm -hmm. of the immeasurable, unfailing love of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we just pounce on, well, look at this and this and this. That's right. I don't think people are persuaded simply by information. No. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you very much, Joshua. I would also say to really confront the person and try to help them to acknowledge the deeper fears that they have. Mm -hmm. I believe that it takes a deep amount mm -hmm. of humility and understanding to be able to reprogram or to acknowledge truth that is new to you mm -hmm. to accept new light into your life mm -hmm. i have a i have a massive amount of respect for anyone out there who has uh converted from one faith to mm -hmm. the christian faith yeah because when you listen we could get people of every single faith mm -hmm. into this room the most scholared of each and every religion but the truth of the matter is only one of them is honestly and truly right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you may be passionate about what you believe. You may have believed it all of your life. It could have been your father's, grandfather's, great-grandfather's faith. But the reality is there is one truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we need to seek that truth. And if we're being real here, when it comes to Jesus, and you hinted at it too, Derek, mm -hmm. is that are you honestly expecting someone else to come? Mm. Yeah. Riding on a donkey in 2024. <laughs> Are you expecting them to come riding on a donkey, to be crucified, to fulfill all of these prophecies? Like, uh, are, we, are we being real here? Mm -hmm. So if you can just acknowledge, hey, maybe I've been wrong all this time yeah. and I should accept mm -hmm. the truth today wow. and turn away from what mm -hmm. I've known mm -hmm. so that I can have eternal life, so that I can put my family on the right path, so that I can look forward and live mm. according to God's will, uh, walking in, in, from this day forward. Amen. 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 Thank you, Joshua. Amen. We're going to go to one last comment. Mighty, I see your hand. And after you, you share your comment, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, as we bring it to a close. Oh, yeah. Wow. Joshua said something that really resonated a chord in me, and that is someone seeking the truth. And I think that's the most important factor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't need to have an extensive knowledge of the prophecies in the Bible in order to you know, believe Christ. A uh, story that comes to mind is when a centurion came to Jesus and he came with such great faith that, you, that Jesus said, you just have to say the word mm -hmm. and my child will be healed. Mm -hmm. And Jesus himself commented, I have not seen such great faith. Mm -hmm. What was different about this person is a Gentile who didn't know the scripture. He heard of Christ mm. and he believed. Mm. He had the love, a mm. uh, love of the truth. Mm. Mm. And I think that's what's very important. Mm. And this is a verse I want to read is in 2 Thessalonians. Mm. All right, 2 Thessalonians two. chapter 2. Okay. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And which verse 
verses or verse did you want to read, Mighty? I want to look at verse 10 to 12. All right. And as, as we're close, we'll close on this, these few verses, all right? Okay. It says, I'm reading the King James versions. And with all the deceit of unrighteousness in those who perish, mm. because they received not the love of the truth, mm. that they might be saved. And for this cause, God saw send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, mm. that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Mm. Mm. So I think this is really important that we have that love of the truth, no matter how inconvenient it may be or how it goes against things that we love in this earth. Mm. And if we have that love of the truth, we'll be able to believe the word that comes to us plainly. Mm. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, Mighty. It reminds us how relevant this is for us today. Mm. Mm. May God help us not only to be a witness, but to also stay connected to him so that we can mm -hmm. be confident in his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Amen. What a reminder today, wherever you are watching is our Hope Sabbath School family. It's not enough to know the truth. Mm. We need to love the truth. And by the way, the truth is not just information. The truth is Jesus. Amen. We need to love him and know him personally, whom to know is life eternal. Let's pray. Lord God, we've seen much evidence today from the Hebrew scriptures, inspiration of God provided through the prophets to give us evidence that Jesus is the Christ, the fulfillment of, of all of the prophecies, all of the hopes of your people through the ages. We choose to believe and to love the truth as it is in Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. What a journey, so much to learn pointing us to Jesus, our Savior. Go out now, be a blessing to those around you.